you've survived another week. Thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to the Black Man with the Gun Show. I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard, and thank you so much for coming back. You know, after last week, I wondered if um, anybody was going to pay me any attention. I got a couple of notes, a couple of letters, and a phone call about last week's podcast. I'm going to address one of those letters today. The topic for today is leadership, baby. Leadership, doing a little Marine Corps style for all my jarheads out there. And also a little prepping and planning. I want to get your mind right for what's going down. Oh, yeah. You've survived another week. Thank you for sharing, supporting, and staying a faithful friend. This is the Black Man with a Gun Show podcast, The Peacemaker. Since 2007, with over 200 plus game changers and guests, American history, gun culture, and a conscientious look at our community. I'm back, baby! One of the things I want to do for you this week is to get your mind thinking about the future. I know we're in that COVID era right now where everybody is just wondering, what next? What in the hell could go wrong next? Who was going to die next? I need you to do better than that. I need you to think about what's going to happen in the next three months, six months. When the winter comes, wherever you live in the world, we have hunting season that's coming. We have prepare for farming and harvesting, fishing, first aid, taking care of wounds and safety. Not only are we talking about firearms, but I want you to survive. Are you hearing me? If you live in a city, you live in an urban environment, you live around other people, you know how folks have been kind of weird lately, right? What are you doing right now to plan to change that? Not saying you got to go anywhere, but how about preparation, preparing for what's coming up, what could happen no proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Are you ready? When you're doing your DIY thing in the basement, you're doing your DIY thing in the garage, you're doing something out back and you're having a good time, and that knife, that tool that you had, misses and hits you, and you have to apply some first aid. How about the person across the street, some little kid is crossing your neighborhood, and they hurt themselves. Knowing that everybody's worrying about the protest down the street, the riot around the block, the COVID, you're going to be a first responder. Can you help that little kid? Can you help yourself? First aid is important. How is your kit? How are you ready for trauma? Start thinking, please. I need you. And if you're outside and you're already into the prepping world, good on you. I got a whole bunch of calls this week from old dudes like me and folks just like you probably that uh, we haven't talked to in a while. And I appreciate them phone calls. One of the things that's um, amazing is that we ain't tripping. We was crazy before to some people, but now nobody's about to say that. But I need you to make an honest assessment of your skill and your survival ability. It has to be honest because to fool yourself can get you or your family members killed. Just make a simple list for yourself and your family members that are available for support during the next disaster. Simply jot down, I can do that or I don't think I can do that. And then think about all the possible tasks and jobs and responsibilities and duties that you have to undertake if it gets worse. What about the vehicle that you got? Can you change your flat tire? I'm not saying you got to change your transmission, but can you fix that broken fan belt? Can you do some other stuff? Can you help out somebody else? While there's still time, seek training. Now, we always talk about firearms on this show. But there's still quite a few people who just bought their first firearm and are finding out that ammo is at a premium. While you still got time and maybe a few dollars, think about reloading. Yeah. Reloading ammunition allows you to take spent brass casings and repurpose them into new rounds. You can make ammunition from brass 
for brand new stuff too. You know, you can do hand loading and reloading. You can buy expensive press or just do a small one. Think about it. I'm going to throw out Dylan Precision because they're my friends. Check out Amazon. Check out a book first. I want you to learn and see what you don't know about reloading. Maybe you can get into it. Maybe you got enough space in your house, your apartment, that you can put up a a reloading press, a shell holder, a die set, have room for all the little pieces that you're going to need. Maybe you're a wizard at it. Yeah. You might find something that you like to do while you're not watching TV because there's nothing on. Preparing in this COVID era. Hunting season. Might be time to go get your license to learn about hunting. Maybe you can. Best time to prepare is when you don't need it. You feel me? How about fishing? Not your thing? What if you had to do it for survival? Different story, right? So, I just dropped into your mind preparation. Reloading, fishing, farming, hunting, first aid. And some little stuff you need just to get going for the future. If you've been to blackmailthegun.com, you've seen that pop up for Buy Me a Coffee dot com forward slash Ken Blanchard and I want to thank those nine people nine people that have supported me and that do support me on that new crowdfunding platform wasn't sure how it was going to go but I wanted to have something just in case Patreon went down and right now Patreon we have 33 members and I thank you family for that you guys have been long standing and because of that we're going to have a private zoom thing once a month coming up soon that I might make it for the um Buy me a coffee, folks, too, that are in the membership area. If you don't think you made a difference, huh, let me tell you something. I would not be here right now doing this on the microphone, podcasting in my basement, if it weren't for you, the supporters of this podcast. This stuff costs, and it's not only financial, it's emotional. And sometimes money talks and everything else is just BS. Because when the bills come and the credit card is like due, and the house is still got to do house stuff and the husband still got to do husband stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then it's being paid for by you. Your little $5 or $10 or 20 bucks, whatever you're contributing helps a lot. Yeah, it does. So thank you for supporting me in buymeacoffee.com and in patreon.com. And the second way is through just email just telling me to keep going and give me encouragement find me on Facebook or however you talk to me that helps too I ain't gonna poo poo that because I need you to talk to me sometimes I need to know when I'm going left and when I'm going right if you want to make sure this thing grows if you want to make sure it still goes please be a member of either patreon.com forward slash black man with a gun or buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ken Blanchard and you know it has Ken with two ends first off I want to say thank you man thank you lady for following me on this thing following my journey allow me to talk to you and share my thoughts and that's what they are actually they're just thoughts sometimes they're not really a conversation until you converse you know share what you got to say I got a letter last week from Barry And he said, Ken, I listened to last Friday's podcast. What's going on? It was thoughtful, and I agree with the gist of what you were saying. Before writing this, I went back and listened again to the podcast you did with The Kid. Things you won't believe about Reverend Ken Blanchard, because I feel the discussion there was helping someone really goes to the heart of what you're trying to say and what's going on. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. When you introduced the minister on what's going on podcast. I listened to what he believed. I heard him and understand his frustration and desperation. His path to the solution is misguided though. I don't fault him for that. I want to help him and others who share his views. I once shared those views when growing up as a young man. I think it was important to just listen to what's driving BLM. The BLM brand is filled with hate race baiters like Reverend Sharpton 
cancel culture, destroy the America we love, flaws and all, frustration and desperation. Intertwined with all of this are good-hearted people who just want a better life in America. When you say, let's support BLM, I'm not really sure how to do that, understanding what the brand stands for. In the podcast, though, I got the gist of what you were trying to say. That is, let's engage the movement that's genuinely trying to improve black lives and listen, share ideas, and find common ground to truly make all lives better. Being a black man, too, and growing up in a rough neighborhood, I know that if we're going to make America, if we're going to make better the American experience for black communities, we're going to have to look inward for the root causes of the unsatisfactory quality of life and effectively root them out. To be effective of rooting out what's killing black communities, we have to help our people to love and respect and care for each. If we can do that as a people, we can do the same for other people. It's a complex issue. Can this be achieved? Question mark. With God's grace and our dutiful work, I know it can be. Now, that was awesome. Thank you, sir, for that. And we agree about Black Lives Matter. But I'm looking at it almost as a tactical move. I want to hijack the thing. I want to steal their momentum. I want to use their social juice. I'm not trying to assimilate. I'm trying to take over. We can't touch the brand. The brand is what it is. But there are so many people on the fence, so many people that support it, that really don't know what BLM really is. So if we moved on side of them, we could pull them to our side. That's what I'm saying. But if you outright push everybody away, you lose the bulk of the people. And good people get lost in there as well. That's what I'm saying. And I think you got it. How many other people... Couldn't understand what your brother from another mother was saying. was thinking, that man must be crazy. I ain't going to do that. But maybe we just need some leadership. And that's the topic for today. We forgot what it looks like. I mean, real leadership, not uh, people who just parrot other people trying to get points. Political pundits, no. Comedians, absolutely not. Career politicians, no. Celebrities, no. High-paid lobbyists, millionaires, no. The immature, the unknowledgeable, the untrustworthy, we don't need them people. You know that quote that uh, Edwin Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do what? Nothing. Too many of us good folks are doing nothing but complaining, but sitting by watching the world go by and burn At best, we're just mimicking and parroting and making memes of stuff. F a meme. Do something. Y'all almost made me cuss. I remember when I was looking at the history of Israel, and they had some times when they were, everybody just going for themselves, man. Kind of reminds me of now. If you look in the Old Testament book of Judges, the 21st chapter, verse 25, or even Judges 17, verse 6, it says, In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That seems like now. One of the reasons I love the Bible is that the recorded history of the Hebrew people is a pretty good history of human nature in general. We all act the same. We haven't changed much. Leadership, baby, leadership. The primary objective of leadership is mission accomplishment. Mission accomplishment is achieving a goal. Achieving a goal is a primary focus when asked to take on the task. And then the secondary goal of a leader is to take care of their troops. This is all from the Marine Corps because that's where I got all my stuff that's um, leadership oriented. So for this episode, this is going to be heavily laden in uh, Marine Corpsology, okay? For all you jarheads out there, hoorah. I'll talk to my Army family a little later on, but uh, right now, it's going to be the Marines Day. We had something called the um, leadership principles and leadership traits. Stuff like bearing, courage, decisiveness, dependability, endurance, enthusiasm, initiative, integrity, judgment, justice, knowledge, loyalty, tact, and unselfishness were the traits of a leader. Just in case, you know, you got your Ph.D. in 
microbiology and you never really got to that leadership part. But we need you in your brains right now. Whatever you do in this culture, whatever you do in our community, we need some new leadership is what I'm saying. And I'm trying to give you some stuff so that you can carry on, so you can step up to the mic. Some of those 11 11, uh, Marine Corps leadership principles include to know yourself and to seek self-improvement, to be technically and tactically proficient. We used to say to know your Marines and to look out for their welfare. Well, how about know your community, know your family? Keep your Marines informed. How about keeping your people informed? Number five, set the example. Six, ensure the task is understood, supervised, and accomplished. Now, you can't delegate your authority. You can delegate a task, but it's a difference. Train your folks to be a team. That takes work right there from the beginning in this every man for himself world. But one of the reasons why Jarheads, Marines, are so close is that we started off as a team. We can assemble and become a team. I don't care how broke down and beat up we are. That part's instilled in us. You want to make sound and timely decisions. Develop a sense of responsibility among your subordinates. Number 10, employ your command in accordance with its capabilities. And finally, seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. Oh, back in the day, we had to remember stuff like uh, these leadership traits, all 14 of them bad boys that I set out in the beginning. We had a crazy acronym called JJ Did Tie Buckle. Any jarhead still remember that one? Might have changed over the years. I got um, all that in 1980, almost 40 years ago here in a couple weeks. September is the month I celebrate 40 years of going to boot camp and coming out of that bad boy. J.J. did tie buckle. Leadership stuff, leadership traits. Justice is the practice of being fair and consistent. We need leaders that have that. A just person gives consideration to each side of a situation and bases rewards or punishment on merit. As good leaders, we have to hold people accountable We have to show that if you do good, you get good things. And if you do bad, you will be held accountable. Judgment. Sometimes leaders must assess situations quickly and without significant time to reflect. There's a thing in the Marine Corps that talks about the 70% solution, meaning an imperfect solution that can be acted upon quickly rather than waiting for the perfect judgment, which may never come, is good enough. This guideline doesn't advise acting in extreme haste, you know. Rather, it advises avoiding analysis paralysis. Marines move, just in case you didn't know that. It argues that with the 70% of the possible knowledge having completed 70% of the analysis and with a confidence rate of about 70%, the time is right to make an informed judgment. Dependability is a quality for leaders. Amidst the stress and the chaos of combat, there's often no telling how people will react. A hero one day may be a catatonic wreck the next. Some would say that that's perfectly understandable. We say that's totally unacceptable. Marines demand dependability in all situations on and off the battlefield. Leaders have consistency in crisis and do not overcommit. They do what they say they'll do when they say they'll do it. Initiative. Find a way to take the initiative. Don't do it for the recognition or for the glory. Do it to help accomplish the mission. I'm asking you to think outside the box, try new things, consider new solutions to existing problems, improvise, overcome, adapt. Decisiveness. You know, research indicates that most people make decisions intuitively rather than analytically more than 90% of the time. In that handbook of Marine non-commissioned officers, they got the following advice for the modern Marine. It says, make sound and timely decisions. Now, to make a sound decision, you must know your mission, what you're capable of, and how to accomplish it. You got to know what's possible, 
that's going to be your obstacle because you're going to get an obstacle. Timeliness is also important as soundness. In many situations, a timely, though inferior decision is better than a long delayed theoretical correct decision. Get off the X. Some of the stuff kind of blends in with your firearms training, right? I'm letting you know that while you're doing whatever you're doing and listening to me, that this stuff is going to be put into your head. That maybe it will jar something loose. Maybe it will motivate you. Maybe it will get you to see a quality in somebody. Tact is important. A lot of folks in our community don't have it. But it's the ability to communicate in the language that best allows a listener to understand the message or meaning that's being communicated and to be motivated to act upon it. Given that background, the tactful leader chooses the language or behavior that will help the people in his audience or her audience to motivate themselves. Tact is the ability to say something or make a point in such a way that not only is that other person not offended, they are totally receptive. Being tactful comes with training and maturity, but is also determined by making the right decisions. The right decisions about what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and who to say it to. Can I get an amen, somebody? Integrity. It's a big one. It's reflected by honesty as well as a desire to inspire and a devotion of values that a leader consistently tries to communicate to those he or she leads. A leader with integrity can rarely, if ever, relax a commitment to what he or she believes is the behavior that best reflects those closely held values. When followers see leaders acting with integrity, they are more likely to want to emulate that quality. Integrity is the cornerstone of leadership. There's only one thing that no one can take away from you. They can take your life, they can take your savings, they can take your property, they can take everything you've got. But one thing that nobody can take from you is your honor, your integrity. You have to voluntarily give that up. You're the owner of your integrity. And some people sell it awfully cheap. Endurance. The enduring leader defaults to responsibility If something must be done, then it must be done, even if the best resources or relevant training aren't available. You know, during the Battle of Guadalcanal, Marine John Bassalone exemplified endurance when he manned his machine gun nonstop for three days and nights without sleep, rest, or food, stalling the efforts of an entire enemy regiment. You might have heard that story while you were in the boot camp. And at the end of the battle, only three Marines from Barcelona's machine gun crew were still standing. Barcelona endured with a pair of burned hands. Barcelona's asbestos gloves had been lost in the chaos and he used his bare hands to handle the hot guns. Bearing. Bearing, you don't talk about too much these days. But for Marine, with bearing, is driven toward a goal with purpose, jumping at opportunities with self-improvement that increase their ability to reach that goal. Bearing is about channeling that drives to other people. Leaders with bearing know where they stand. They understand the environment in which they work. They set the example for others to follow in both attitude and behavior. Unselfishness. Unselfish leaders make decisions that benefit as many as possible without worrying too much about themselves. They look out for the welfare of their teams beyond simple job descriptions, legal concerns, and even their own personal comfort. And they do this most particularly in difficult situations. Courage. Like the courage from the cowardly lion, it's never easy. Whether it's disciplining somebody or standing up, or facing a swarm of charging enemies, online or in person. Courage is situational. It lives in a moment when it's required by people who believe in themselves and priorities beyond personal comfort and the risk of pain or failure. Courage is doing what's right, adhering to a higher standard of personal conduct to lead by example and to make tough decisions under stress and pressure. It's that inner strength that makes people like you, Love you. Follow you. 
Knowledge. You got to have some knowledge, man, lady. The business of knowing what to do and how to do it lifts the leader above the crowd. Knowledge goes beyond the facts of the job. It also is in the knowledge of who you're leading, who they are, what motivates them. I'm sharing this with you right now because I know I'm with leaders that some of you guys have given up. You chilling or you're thinking somebody else is supposed to do it. It is knowledge of the culture in which you work so that you understand what your superiors, goals, and missions are. And it's also self-knowledge, unflinchingly knowing your own strength and weaknesses and having the desire to excel. Sharing knowledge with subordinates can feel to some people like they're giving up control and they might not like to do it, but in reality, leaders are not effective because they are the knowledge holders. The best leaders are the ones who make knowledge available to their teams and understand how best to deploy that knowledge in the best possible manner. Loyalty. A leader expresses loyalty to their subordinates by supporting their needs and ensuring their welfare in a number of ways. Subordinates express loyalty to that sort of caring leadership by positively and efficiently carrying out the leader's orders and instructions. Loyalty is the most common expression of aspects of almost all Marine Corps leadership traits and characteristics. Those who express it through dedication and professional performance of duty. The most loyal employee is not necessarily one who has been in a job the longest. Some are simply marking time with little or no interest in making valuable contributions to the organization. You can tell the difference. Enthusiasm. When we're enthusiastic about something, we're willing to sacrifice for it. People who are enthusiastic about a cause will sacrifice time and money for it. You see it all the time. People who are enthusiastic about their jobs will make personal sacrifices to spend time at work to educate themselves to do better. Men and women who are enthusiastic about being in this fight understand that sacrifice might come at a very high price. Even when the requirements are difficult, enthusiastic leaders set aside any negative aspects of the mission and focus on the positive energy they can bring to the table. And it's not easy. It takes more than a little self-discipline. But it works, and a show of enthusiasm often leads to truly inspirational behavior. And now, for something completely different. Can't hear you! A little louder! All together! Much louder! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! One, two, three, four, you guys! Direct from our newsroom in Washington, in color. All right, good people. I want to highlight a couple of things that are happening soon. As of uh, September 19th and 20th, the GRPC, the Gun Rights Policy Conference, will be having their 35th annual event. This time it'll be virtual. So if you want to check that out, go to GRPC. Look up the Second Amendment Foundation's website and you get all the info for that. Also, on the 26th of September, Freedom Hunters is having a Sporting Clays benefit, 8 to 2 p.m., Silver Creek Sporting Club in Kiowa, Colorado. And the details, you'll find that on blackmanwithagun.com or go to freedomhunters.com. Sporting Clay benefit. And finally, but not the final thing that's happening this year, the 2A rally is going to be virtual Saturday, October 24th this year from 2 to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. 
This is the same rally that was in Washington, D.C. last year. And that's all the news that I scraped at this time. And hopefully those who understand the power of the microphone will want to send their information to me directly. And I can promote your stuff for free. Since 2014, I have been a member of the Crossbreed Holster family. If you carry concealed, get a holster that supports not only your firearm, but your freedom, the faith, and this brother with a tried free lifetime guarantee. Crossbreedholsters.com. Crossbreedholsters.com. If you like me, tell me. If you miss me, show it. If you love me, prove it. I want to invite you to check out my other podcast. There is the new Ken Blanchard Show. It's a weekly podcast of positive smiles, love, and encouragement. I don't know where that one's going. But it's there. You'll find it at kenspodcast.com. Then there's speaklifepodcast.com. It's my Christian show to restore and strengthen the family, provide hope for those in need, and offer a non-traditional place of worship using tech to be anywhere. And everybody's welcome, including those who are still searching for what they believe in. And then finally, Indian Motorcycle Radio for those who love motorcycling and especially those that love the Indian motorcycle. You'll find it at IndianMotorcycleRadio.com. hoping that I said something that stirred you, that motivated you, that inspired you, that got you off your rusty dusty, that made you go, hmm, hmm. Well, maybe not that sound. That was like constipation or bad gallbladder or something. But you know what I mean, right? All right, that's it, my friends. And thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting the Black Man with the Gun Show podcast. Feel free to share this show. And if you like what you heard, please support this bro. Now, just in case nobody has told you this today, I love you, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next time, shalom, baby. If I can hear somebody as I pass along. Oh